Erica. Hello. Welcome to What If I Say Yes. (laughs) How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, Although, as you know, I've mentioned I'm very anxious about this interview. Um, But overall, wonderful. Uh, You've been a shining light, so can't complain. (laughs) Okay. I'm excited. Thank you. Um, We start all the interviews with my guests introducing themselves to my audience. So, Tonika, who are you? Who am I? Wow, yes. Uh, I feel like I should be prepared to answer that, but I am not, which maybe sums it up. Uh, That's (laughs) like... Maybe me in a nutshell, unable to share who I am just quickly and easily. Um, but I'm Tonika. I, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, USA. Um, and I currently live here now after traveling a little bit and uh, going to college outside of the city. Um, I like to create. I like to do music. Um, I like writing and hanging out with my friends, <laughs> nice. watching soccer. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, that. I guess that's who I am. I, I don't know. That seems so deep. <laughs> Is that <laughs> what we're going for? Should I go deeper? We're going for with, uh, with whatever. We're going with whatever you want it to be. So there are no rules, but to just be open and sharing whatever you feel comfortable with. So question. Yeah. The instruments yeah. you play are that guitar and the electric keyboard? Uh, yeah, the keyboard is the real instrument I play. The guitar is an instrument I try to play every now and again and do it poorly enough that I don't pick it up for a little while and <laughs> <laughs> therefore never get any better <laughs> because you have to practice. Um, but yeah, I, I can noodle around a little on guitar, but my primary is the keyboard. I've been doing that since I was in the low single digits of age, like really? four or five years old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's definitely a passion. We bought one for my daughter, Maya, when she was, I think, eight. And she got interested in it for a little while. Yeah. And then she wanted a guitar and then she wanted a ukulele. Love and it. then she started playing the violin at school. But little by little, the, the instruments that we bought for her, um, lo- she lost interest. So the guitar, we just sold it. <laughs> the ukulele, I mean, <laughs> I'm debating whether I learn how to play it and keep it or if uh, I... absolutely yeah <laughs> yeah I mean what if I tell it and then the keyboard it's I already put it on the rack list so <laughs> it's on its way out yeah I mean, that's okay wait how why did you, you have that reaction with the ukulele why, why absolutely do you play the ukulele I tried it's similar to the guitar where I picked it up for a little bit and mm-hmm. um it's a different skill set. I don't know. Are you very musical? Do you play anything where you've learned how to do it to like where you're feeling comfortable with it? That's um, kind of embarrassing to say. I remember that I played the piano when I was a little girl. We had a piano that my maternal grandmother had given us. Um, so I could play the piano. And then I remember I could play the guitar and sing songs. So I remember vividly being um, at my great grandmother's house singing a song and playing the guitar. Yeah. And then it's like, I went into this black hole and forgot everything. So if you give me a guitar, I don't know where to start. If you, I mean, with the electric keyboard, um, I don't know, I don't remember anything. It's all gone. Um, No, I, but I completely understand that I have, big swaths of memory missing from my childhood as well it's intense sometimes trying to think back and remember it's kind of crazy what you do remember I I remember the first time I played my keyboard it was with my uncle who um, later passed away when I was pretty young uh, but he was playing the Beethoven song for Elise yeah and I immediately wanted to do it I want I 
just staring at him and his fingers and moving down the keyboard. I wanted to do that. Um, and he taught me the first two notes because it's just two little keys right next to each other. And so that's oh. all I do for a while. Uh, but of course, that's the first song I asked my piano teacher when I later got to take lessons. That's the first thing I wanted to play. And he taught me a little bit more of it, but he told me to wait because it's a little bit of complex for a five-year-old to try to learn uh, as their first piece. But yeah, like I vividly remember that. But then there are other, you know, little childhood things that are just gone. So mm-hmm. I think memory is a funny thing. But you said, why did I have the reaction for the ukulele? Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. It just seems like it could be a fun thing to do. I enjoy learning a lot. That's mm-hmm. a big part of, I think, my life. Just um, and I want to be a person who never stops learning and never believing I know it all because that couldn't be farther from the truth. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I personally believe that's, that goes for everyone. You know, I, I, I think we're constantly learning. And if we stop, that's when we um, are declining. We're, we're not, uh, I, I don't know. I, I've lost the words there, but I, I, I think I want to keep learning forever. You don't grow. Yeah. You're curious and learning. Yeah, if you stop being curious, you're uh, there's nothing really left. What what else can the world offer us if we don't? Also, I mean, for for people who say want. they know it all, it would be so boring. It would. No? <laughs> it would. It often already is, even as we want to learn more. Uh, and so I I don't know. I I think if whenever I stop feeling curious about something or whenever I don't want to get better at whatever it is that I'm doing for me, that's sometimes a signal to move on. You know, it's time to do something else and learn Mm -hmm. something more, learn something, a a different skill or a different aspect of whatever it is that I'm doing. Um, Mm Yeah, I I apply that to my jobs that I've had before, you know, if I'm in an assistant position and I don't want to grow anymore, I don't want to learn any other role here, that probably means it's time, (laughs) it's time to find something else to do. Yeah, (laughs) right. Exactly. So going back to what you said when I asked you who you are, you mentioned soccer. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, um, I mean, in the United States. It's getting, it's the attention to the soccer, to the game is getting better. It is. But it, like traditionally, it's it's weird, not weird, it's rare to find people who like to watch soccer games. What happened with you? (laughs) Why are you one of them? (laughs) Uh, Because in Mexico, in Mexico, you're like, you have to watch soccer. Yeah. But here is like, it's rare to find people you can watch soccer games with. You're right. I, I mean, I think you're correct that the interest is growing. So I am probably, um, you know, if we're thinking about it objectively, I am just part of that wave. I happened to learn about it and catch on at the same time as a lot of other people. And hopefully it keeps going to the point mm-hmm. where we're catching up with the, sort of the rest of the world <laughs> in this interest and appreciation for the beautiful game. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, I am a late joiner, I guess. I hate calling myself a bandwagon fan, but I guess I sort of am um, as How a kid. Uh, so uh, I guess the phrase when you jump on the bandwagon, uh, I don't know where it originates, but you know, someone just hopping on to a, something fun that they see other people doing late okay. in the game. Um, okay. So they're not an original fan. They're not the hipster fans. Okay. Um, but I, as a kid, I wasn't, yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're hopping on later while it's already rolling down the street. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm going to have to look that up later where bandwagon came from. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, early on, I knew people who played soccer, like in school, the occasional little friend, like I had a friend who was super into Mia Hamm um, because she was big back in my grade school years. And Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know who she was. I'm like, what's she play? She's an athlete. Okay, cool. 
<laughs> next back to science class. Like, I don't know, that wasn't my interest at the time. Um, but many years passed, I finished college, I was working at the time, um, and I was going through a rough breakup. Um, at the time, it was my first real relationship that had just ended. Um, I was experiencing some intense anxiety over it, like the, probably the start, start of depression over it. And I didn't I couldn't recognize those feelings in myself yet because it was the first time I was having them. Uh, but I was working with a, a now friend, but then just colleague who uh, who noticed what I was going through. Uh, and we were on a travel job together out of town. I forget where. And we had one day off where we're sharing a hotel. And she said, listen, uh, her name's Carolyn. Carolyn said, hey, it's the World Cup. We're out of town. We're in the middle of nowhere on this travel job. It's just you and me. We've got the day off. You're clearly going through something. I don't know how to be there for you, but the two of us are going to sit down. We're going to watch the World Cup and we're going to cheer for Team USA. And I'll tell you everything you need to know about this game. You got it? And I'm like, okay, I got it. And <laughs> that was it. That was the genesis of why I fell in love with soccer. It's a completely random story. It seems like most people have their club that their parents loved and they grew up uh, watching, or maybe they played as a kid or in college or high school or something. I just had a breakup and was very emotional <laughs> and needed something to focus on. And I attached to it in a way that I had not anything else. And before I knew it, I knew what the offsides rule was as well as anyone knows what it is. And <laughs> I was in. Um, wow. And so, yeah, that that's kind of it. That's the story. And so now I, of course, am a supporter of my local club. And um, yeah, it, it's just a big part of my life that in a way that I never would have anticipated. You know, for me, there's this weird thing in the United States, because in Mexico, we call it football. Yes. But if I say football here, Mm -hmm. yeah it's the other one it's so, the it's and then when I say, one. <laughs> yeah but then when I say soccer because my pronunciation in English is sometimes not very good oh wait <laughs> so I'm weary that it's gonna sound like the other word <laughs> <laughs> so well, like, everybody call it football it would be so easy <laughs> I agree. Or just add American to the other football, American football, which is what yeah. people call it everywhere else, I think. Uh, yes, in Mexico, it's football, American. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, I don't think we'll do that here. It's going to be soccer for a while. Uh, anyway, yeah. Um, okay, well, see, now we know a lot more uh, things about who Tonika is. Yeah. Very nice. So let's jump into the moment in your life when you ask the question, right. what if I say yes? And then you answered yes. And then you did something. I don't know what it is. Yeah. So go ahead. You say go ahead. Uh, <laughs> this, this is a tough one. You prepared me weeks in advance for this question <laughs> for this very moment. Um, and I still am at a loss. I have no idea what my yes is. It, um, as you've heard already, I can be a deeply anxious person. I don't know why. It is just part of what this is. Um, and uh, do you want us to explore it together? Thing. I would love it. to do that. I would love to because it, it, this is one of the things that just made me really. I, I couldn't get out of my head about it. Like, what have I said yes to? And I think of all of these things that I've said no to over the years. And I think of all of this. And of course, I've said yes to so many things. Like, we have to. That's how we live. That's how we move forward. Um, and at the same time, I just, I think I, uh, maybe I was overthinking it. But it seemed like a lot of my yeses were steeped in a no, if that makes okay. sense. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Let's let's start backwards. You're gonna yeah. the first interview we're gonna do backwards. That means we're curious and very creative. See, we're gonna bring something new to do. 
<laughs> yeah. So tell me, choose a moment in your life when you decided that saying no was a better idea, like a big no, clear no that you have in your mind. Let's explore that one. Okay. Yeah. Or the first one that comes to mind. It doesn't have to be big. It just That's has okay. to be. Um, all right. I am going to. So it's like a twofer. Can I do both at the same time? Sure. <laughs> so it's like my no and my yes. So, yes. all right, this is a yes. It's about my dog. His okay. name is Sherlock Bones. He's the best. He uh, is actually right here laying down. He's a sweet, sweet boy. Um, but I, if you had met me a year ago, uh, you would have known me as a cat person because I very much am. I hadn't had a dog ever since I was like, not ever, but since I was in grade school and it was, it wasn't my job really to take care of a dog. Um, but, uh, I had two cats last year and they passed away, unfortunately. Um, but no, 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 it's okay. It, it happens. They're, they're very sweet. Um, and that was in like the fall. And the holidays were coming up and I was thinking, gosh, I, the holidays are hard sometimes. What can I do that's really different that are, that's going to take me out of this? Um, and I thought, okay, I'll foster a dog. <laughs> Why not? I'll just get a dog for the weekend. And luckily for me, there was this program called home for the holidays where you're supposed to take a dog home just for the weekend over the Thanksgiving holiday. It was, and um, and then you take him back to the shelter and they just get a break from being in there. And that's how I met Sherlock. Uh, I, uh, I had him for three days, um, uh, and Thanksgiving came, um, and we had, you know, it was my first time having a dog. Like I, this was new to me I, having had cats for the last, you know, eight years, I was used to just, you know, we lay around inside. We clean out the litter box every couple of days. You don't have to really do anything. You don't have to go outside in the morning to take them for a walk or multiple <laughs> times a day. Like it's very, very chill because cat, uh, having a dog, even just for the first couple of days was completely different. Um, even just getting up and out and walking was a new thing for me. I wasn't the most active person at the time. Um, but I, even after just a couple of days, I felt that difference that getting up and moving and being more active mm -hmm. did like, I felt it doing something for me. Um, and then the Thanksgiving holiday came and as I had anticipated, it was rough. Holidays can be hard, um, mm -hmm. sometimes. And, uh, the fact that I had to get up and walk a dog, mm -hmm. like changed everything for me. Like I had to physically move and someone, this other being was waiting and needed me to do something for them. And, and that's not something that I have a lot in just my life as a single person, only child, um, not a huge like network of family and everything like, but just having this other being that needed me, um, was a big change. Uh, so yeah, that, that is, I said, Let me yes. stop you right there. Two, two things that one yeah. is, um, one is a question, but the other one is, um, you reminded me. So my brother, Hector, who had this idea of the, what if I say yes, Oh, uh, he passed in 2016 in August. And then I think a few weeks after that, or maybe a month, I don't remember exactly, but I, uh, a friend of mine was going to Mexico and she asked me if we could take care of her little dog, Josefina. And we said, yes. And this, exactly the same thing you mentioned happened to me. So imagine mm -hmm. how I was feeling after losing Hector. But the fact that I needed to wake up to take Josefina out, not only once, but like three times a day mm -hmm. and walk in nature and, and pick up her poop. <laughs> yeah. 
like the fact that I had to do all these things, but I was out. I was not inside my apartment and then thinking about losing Hector. Just that physical act of being outside with Josefina, mm -hmm. I think helped me tremendously. And it's not that, I mean, when Josefina had to go back, uh, we were also relieved because she was a lot of work and I already have a daughter. <laughs> But it's true. through the years, I can go back and see, like, mentally, she helped me so much. It was a blessing to um, having to take care of, of Josefina. And then the question I was going to ask you, I completely forgot, but maybe, <laughs> ah, yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, you remember, it's Chuck's. <laughs> <laughs> my daughter's often now and she's like oh mom, you forgot again and then like yes but i will remember in five minutes or seconds i don't know <laughs> anyway the question you so when you had when when you fostered sherlock bones is that the mm -hmm. name okay. yeah that's his name <laughs> did he have that name he didn't <laughs> no, he had a different. What was name. his name before? His name was Cantor, uh, uh, and it, it's like a type of walk, you know, uh, sort of like a bouncy little jaunty <laughs> walk, <laughs> which sort of makes sense. That is how he walks, but it didn't fit him to me. It was. Uh, it was. It was by. I think it was right after the holiday that I started calling him by this other name. Uh, because he and I you know dogs sniff of course that is what they do they investigate everything but he gets really intense about it and at the time like I hadn't been around other dogs so I wasn't sure if he was more or less but <laughs> since I've had verification from other people <laughs> like bona fide dog people no pun intended who have said yeah he sniffs everything. He investigates like more than any other dog that they've ever met. Uh, so I feel uh, justified <laughs> in the name. Yeah, him. Yes. So then, a little detective. You were gonna have him for a few days. At what yep. point did you change your mind and you decided you wanted to keep him? Uh, so that was on the holiday. Um, so I guess a little background. I mentioned him a few moments ago, uh, only child, um, single person, so not in a relationship, not married or anything. And uh, my family ties are complicated, to say the least. I, I, I don't need to get into details, but, um, you know, kind of my parents separated and uh, scattered family sort of everywhere. We don't hang out a lot. And uh, I often end up spending holidays alone. And so I anticipated that coming. That's why I got him. And on that Thanksgiving holiday, I it got very dark, <laughs> um, as it often does for me. And he was there just being himself, <laughs> being a dog who needed things, who needed to eat and to walk and to poop and to be active and to be curled up and, and uh, cuddled and just get his energy out. And I had to have energy to make sure that he could get his energy out. And all of those things did more for me on a single day. Um, than I, than I even anticipated. I didn't think it was going to be that great. I thought I was going to be able to just take him back. No problem. Uh, but I feel like in so many ways, this dog saved my life that night. Mm -hmm. um, and, and he did it again a month later on Christmas. It, and he's just there every single day. Yeah, I'm talking about you. Um, <laughs> you know, that uh, reminds me. I, yeah. I walk a dog now as one of my jobs. Um, the woman who owns this dog, Fennec, sent us a video the other day to me and other friends about, um, and I don't remember the specifics, it's, I'm super bad with 
details and memory sometimes. <laughs> but Same. it was um, it was a news piece about a professor, I guess, or a researcher, a, a woman in a university <laughs> who had created a program for anxious students. Mm -hmm. And so what she did was she figured out precisely what you and I have noticed about dogs, that people with dogs get calmer. And so they, part of the news piece is a, a student and doing his masters. And so he was very nervous about presenting what um, his thesis was going to be. So the work that was done inside that program was to put him inside a room full of dogs. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what? <laughs> presentation. And some dogs are like, <laughs> others are just walking around and, and others can be asleep like <laughs> I to see this that's amazing okay so <laughs> so he's giving his presentation to the dogs or the dogs are just there and he's giving it to the camera or to other people no to the dogs brilliant <laughs> that's fantastic uh, oh and my gosh. He said that, that made him calm down and be like work on his presentation. And so by the time he had to present to humans, <laughs> he felt less anxious and better. And then after the professor, this woman says, and I know that cat lovers are gonna write to me and say, why don't we create a program with cats? And then it's like, but cats are completely different. They're so the different. <laughs> she says the program with cats would have to be for overconfident people. Mm, that's someone hilarious. who's super confident and you have the cat who can care less <laughs> about you. Um. <laughs> that is great. As someone who I still describe myself as a cat person, I can <laughs> attest that sounds very true. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I'm practicing every pitch and presentation I have from now on to my dog. Uh, that's I use that. Brilliant. So my daughter is now part of a musical. They're rehearsing for a musical. Put that's wonderful. In middle school. She wanted to audition first. Oh, there he is. Oh, yeah. You see him now. <laughs> Hi, Sherlock Bones. Mm -hmm. he got up he was uh laying right here I think he got embarrassed we're talking about him <laughs> well now the world is gonna see who he is anyway, okay so my daughter wanted to prepare an audition for uh, this musical and um let's say that it didn't go as planned uh oh and she came back very upset so then days later I received this um this news piece with this video of this professor on the program and then I was like oh so Maya I saw this program and ah, this exists this is a very good idea I was thinking what if next year if you want to try again for another musical what if we ask Margaret to lend us Phoenix and I'll put you in a room because Phoenix is the most wonderful dog he's so lovely We'll put you with Finnick in a room. You'll rehearse your song and then we'll see. And she was like, yes, but only Finnick, right? You're not going to be around. I'm like, no, no, no. We close the room. It's just you and Finnick. Yes. I could try that. That's wonderful. I hope um, she does. Yeah. She's going to yeah. be a, a dancer. So. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, she's also part, she's part of the ensemble. So she's going to sing, but she's not going to be. That's one of great. The main. Anyway, oh, so man. you're, you're I'm beautiful. So, yes. Well, yeah. Sorry. I definitely want to talk more about musical theater in middle school. That's great. Uh, <laughs> but sorry, I cut you off. Go ahead. No, no, no. We can, we can explore that part. Were you part of, a, were, were, did you join no, musicals when you were in middle regret. school or high school? No, oh. I didn't. I didn't even think about it or know that it was a thing I could do. And you then, said it was your biggest regret? Uh, I've got 
a few biggest regrets, oh, well. but it's, that's one of them. Uh, <laughs> no, it, it, uh, but it always seemed so cool. And I love that she's doing that. It's neat. What musicals were there in your middle school or high school when you were? Gosh, I don't age? even remember. I wasn't even aware of them, uh, but I was a big musical fan. Like I always sang and danced like, in my room at home <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> to, to all sorts of them. Uh <laughs> Yeah, sorry. I, I've taken us on a tangent that I can't maintain. <laughs> so we, Everything we can, is it, it's uh, a gem. So anything we can talk about here is it's uh, it's fine. So um, you said you wanted to combine the yes and the no. So the yes was yeah. having the yes was the dog, um, and the no for me in that in that one I feel like it was a no to reliving the years past in the same way that I had before like I, I recognized that I didn't want to do that again I didn't want to be in that dark place with only myself to pull me out of it I, I, I wanted to change something I guess and to me that feels like a no you know it's saying a firm no to redoing the same things over and over and over again but it's also a yes I guess. Uh, and so that, I think that is what maybe while I was doing my introspective homework <laughs> for today, I, I think that's what I landed on is so many of my yeses are tied with no's and vice versa, mm -hmm. um, because they're inherently linked somehow, I, I guess. And I read Hector's uh, speech that he wrote and I thought that was so beautiful how the allowing her to pick up the little doll was a yes, like that is like just defined a yes, but it's also sort of a no in a way, right? Like it's also refusing to let your fear overpower this moment. Um, and I, I, yeah, I think that's beautiful. And I, I get, yeah, I, I think what I landed on is maybe my true yes, like the big yes that I've done is saying yes to complexity, like saying yes to being okay that two things can be true at the same time. Um, and that gets maybe a little more philosophical and cerebral than we intended, but uh, yeah. No, it's lovely. That's, that's where I, and that's where I landed. <laughs> it's lovely. It's so funny. You were so nervous about doing this interview and where it was very hard for you to come up with a clear yes. And then you somehow managed to summarize very beautifully <laughs> the whole idea. <laughs> Bravo, Tamika. <laughs> the whole idea of all the yeses and the noes are intertwined. Whenever you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. You, whenever you say no to something, you're saying yes to something different. So, see? <laughs> well, that's my struggle, though. So that's why I was anxious. <laughs> because I, I don't have a clear yes. What am I going to say? Nothing's going to make sense. Uh, that's me. <laughs> uh, so I love it. It's yes to yeah. complexity. <laughs> sure. Um, which is not a yes at all. <laughs> Why not? It's it both. <laughs> Porque no los dos. It's, it's, it has to be both. Um, so, so now yeah. tell me, how do you see, for example, those yeses and no's and that complexity in something that you already mentioned you love, which is music? Ooh. <laughs> wow oh my word uh, do you have my therapist chatting you with <laughs> with questions to ask me and make me cry um so yeah music is a big one I said yes to it at a very young age just wanting to be like my uncle and uh him being a huge role model for me also please let me know if the you can hear Sherlock down here he's Come no, back. he's fine, okay, and great. I love having him around. So hi. I don't know if you can see him, but yeah. Um, so yeah, music was a big one for me, and I said yes to it when I was really young, uh, wanting to be like my uncle. Um, Talk and, about 
talk a little bit more about your uncle. Oh, he was, from what I can remember, like just a shining light um, in our world. Uh, mm -hmm. My mom had three brothers. Uh, one of them died before I was born. Um, and one of, two of them I got to know as a young child. Um, and Uncle Mike was like the one, you know, like he's the one who was like, he's super smart. He's really creative and musical and into the arts and into sci-fi and mm -hmm. tech and gadgets as much as you could be in 1996, you know, like mm -hmm. we've seen so much change since then. Mm -hmm. God, he would have loved it. Um, but, uh, I, I, I don't remember much to be honest, because he, he died, I think in 1997. So I was seven years old and I just, I remember him being, a an example of creativity for me of um of letting yourself be different i guess uh and being okay with uh not being the same as everything around you like he loved music he made me a, a mixtape right before he died <laughs> and it, which is like the biggest cliche ever like it's the whole plot to guardians of the galaxy at the beginning like yeah great a tape but he did <laughs> and and um I now you have, still have it I actually it was destroyed shortly after but I have it I have an image of it tattooed on me uh, because it that was kind of my way of bringing it back uh, to have in my life forever like in a way that will never be gone do you uh, remember the songs yeah, yeah. One of them was Hero by Mariah Carey. Aww. And for a very long time, I uh, skipped that song whenever it came on. And, you know, even now, if I don't want to open myself up emotionally, I'll still do that. But every now and again, I'll listen to it. And it's almost like he was, and I don't know this, this is all just screenwriting at this point but it's almost like he was sending me strength for later um because at the time of course I didn't know this I was a kid he was HIV positive and he ended up passing away because of complications of that so he would have known that he wasn't well um he would have known that he wasn't likely uh, with the treatments available at the time he would have known he wasn't going to be around for very much longer and Yay. Oh boy. Lucia, I swear. <laughs> um, but the idea that he would have given me this song in particular, that's got all of these lyrics about being true to yourself and finding strength within you instead of looking for it from outside sources. And um, did he, uh, you mentioned he played yeah. the piano? He did. I never heard him play this song or anything, but <laughs> any other really instruments? Not. I think so, but not that I can even recall him playing in front of me. Mm -hmm. Um I don't know. I don't remember. I'll have to ask my mom. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so that that was a big one that I didn't truly and fully appreciate until I was an adult, um, listening to the lyrics in a new way after not listening to them for a really long time mm -hmm. uh, so yeah that I forget where we were going with that but... the complexity and how the yeses yeah. and no show up in music for you mm -hmm. so you were starting to tell me how you got That's into right. music yeah so um all right and we took the tangent about my uncle so that's him he's a brilliant brilliant man and so I started playing very young but it was always like a side Thing. You know, I did a high school special program for medicine and joined college or started college as a pre-med student. Um, wow. and yeah, it, it was my path. <laughs> like I was doing internships and everything at that stage. <laughs> sure that that was going to be my future. And it took a, uh, it took some bravery to say no to it. Uh, but that was a big no back then. Why uh, did you start that path? Um, I think that, uh, you know, it's complicated, uh, but 
the short version is it seemed like the best path to success um, in a family like mine in the place where we live, um, doctor, lawyer, something with a clear career trajectory um, seemed the best way to go. And so I was ushered sort of into that um, path, which makes sense. You know, you, you want the best for your family and for your your kids. So yeah, but I realized it wasn't for me. <laughs> how, how was that realization? Because it seems a very difficult decision to make. Yeah. And and you need a lot of insight to decide to go a different route. Well, you do. So those would be the yeses that I didn't have yet. What I did have was a clear resounding no that I could not continue down the path of, um, you know, the medical field because it, I wasn't thriving in it. I wasn't succeeding in it, uh, in a way that was sustainable for me. I, I tried to take stock of the studying I was doing, how I performed afterwards. Um, and it wasn't right. It, I, I remember very clearly, uh, in sophomore year, first semester biology, sitting in a test and looking down at my paper going, okay, if my eyes just wander about 30 degrees that way, maybe I can pass this test. And for me, that's when I knew it's like, well, if I'm going to have to 30 degree, I wander every test I have from now on <laughs> just to get through this career. Maybe it's not for me. <laughs> maybe if I have to cheat to make it happen, then <laughs> No, I left the lecture hall and withdrew from all my science classes that day. And I still don't know how I did on that test. I kind of wonder. Um, <laughs> maybe I was just anxious for nothing. Uh, but yeah, and, and decided to try different things because I guess that's what college is for. I was a philosophy major for a semester and an English major and a theater major. And ultimately, I ended up with film and um advertising weirdly uh which is sort of what I do now so it worked out mm -hmm. and uh yeah so that was a big big no at the time and but all the while <laughs> getting back on track music was there I was doing it in my free time I always played piano a year did not pass when I wasn't um playing on my own just enjoying it um and I happened to be in Nashville, Tennessee, uh, also known as Music City for <laughs> people in the United States. Um, and yet the entire time I was there, I didn't go out. I didn't play out. I didn't try to take that as a career. I was terrified. I was paralyzed with fear of trying to make it in a place where the best musicians and some of the best musicians in the world or the country, at least, are residing and making their living here. And I, I never thought I could. So that was a big no, but mixed in with still a little bitty yes that I can't let this go. Um, <laughs> uh, ultimately, I ended up moving back to Atlanta where I kept playing and it just got too ridiculous. I decided to go to some open mics and play gigs. Um, and now I do that uh, in a smaller setting. You know, I, I do that every now and again. I play shows and. Um, so you yeah. play what you compose or do you play? Mm -hmm. Some. Do you sing also? Yeah. And so there I play and accompany some... myself. I'm sorry. So I sing and accompany myself on the keys. Um, and if I'm lucky, I get someone else to play while I sing uh, solo. But yeah, so I, I do it now. And that was a yes. But the entire time it's been mixed in with this big no, no, that can't be your main thing. No, that is an unstable path to follow. Um, but yes, I have to do this. Yes, this is part of my life and it always will be. Uh, and so complexity. <laughs> so it's part of a future yes and maybe find the future to be a singer, like what would be, if we could take out the anxiety and all the fear you have had 
um, when you have said no, what would be the ideal for you to become or to be what? <laughs> That's a Another tough question. question. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It, but for me, it's only difficult because I feel hyper aware that the biggest thing holding me back is probably me. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, I also feel aware that many, many people go down that path and never see the dreams that they see for themselves. And I I don't want that for me. And I like my comfortable life. I enjoy uh, uh, being able to not worry about certain things and worry about where my next gig's coming from and mm -hmm. uh, what I'm doing in two weeks. And if my vocals on that last track were actually good, or if people were just telling me they were good, you know, and, and I I don't know that that's something I want for me. Uh, I think all of that breeds just more anxiety for someone yeah. like So I guess with music, if I could see myself uh, having what I want, it would be like getting able to perform whenever I want uh, and contentment with that. And yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Lucia, <laughs> what are you doing to me? Oh, <laughs> uh, geez. I, I, but I can't lie. It would be amazing to write songs and sing them for people and they like them enough that they want to hear them all the time. Who am I kidding? Like that would be the best. It's like a, it's like a filmmaker, an indie filmmaker saying they don't want to win an Oscar. Like, shut up. Of course you want to win an Oscar. You just don't, you just want to look hipster and cool. And people think that, oh, it's not like, it doesn't matter to me. I don't need that. Like get the, get out of here. Yes. You, you want it. Like just admit you want it. And so I can admit to myself that I do. There's a part of me that does absolutely want that, but I also temper it with wanting to live other parts of my life, I guess, other, other ways that wouldn't be possible if that were my pursuit. There's a lot that you sacrifice, I think, to be a singular success that way. So for example, if how important is it is to you to perform live? That's the best. That's the best part of it. That's the best. <laughs> so yeah. if if you if you were to go a different route, let's say make videos of you singing and playing from home with wonderful Sherlock Bones walking in the back <laughs> and then publishing them. I don't even know if publishing is the right word, but uh, bringing them to the world with all these yeah. um, avenues that we have nowadays, would that fulfill the same? Would that feel the same? Would that, or, or you are a, a live performer in nature? I love performing live. There's something different about it. Mm -hmm. um, it's never, I mean, people sometimes record you, sure, but, you know, you can't get that moment back. The, the, and there's no, you can leave it all out there. You can be wacky. You can do something completely off the wall and it doesn't matter because just a room full of strangers saw you. Who cares? Mm -hmm. um, I love that. I think it's great. I don't, I don't know that it would be the same to record, but I think that's something to try. I think you're you're onto something there. Like, why not? Mm -hmm. It could be fun. Mm -hmm. um, that is, I mean, I'm thinking of that because it would take at least some of the anxiety away. You, you record yourself. If you like it, you publish it. If you don't, then nobody will know. <laughs> And then workshopping me, I, I should do it with a, a, a room full of dogs. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. 
And, and if you don't get any enough dogs, you can ask people with dogs. You, you can ask to Zoom with people with dogs and just leave the screens with the dogs moving <laughs> around. <laughs> It's brilliant. Oh, well, I just moved to this condo. So there's just hella dogs. They're everywhere. There you go. <laughs> there's so many dogs. You can <laughs> have like people drop them off. <laughs> you can have uh, will the dogs get along. I mean, if you oh, absolutely along. not. <laughs> no, sadly. Uh, so Sherlock would need to have like uh, a room full of small dogs that he can feel confident <laughs> he's the king because you can you can also um offer dog sitting services with a plus that is oh, you yeah. singing to them oh yeah so it's like therapy for the dogs the people who hire you don't know that it's also therapy for you <laughs> yeah and yeah so you can have these sessions with the dogs <laughs> I honestly think we have we're really on to something I'm not kidding like wouldn't you watch that I would watch that I would I would watch at least five seconds of that which if you know anything about me and my internet watching habits that's saying a lot (laughs) I would click it (laughs) it's brilliant you this is gonna be a what if I say yes homework for you oh no <laughs> you didn't tell me anything about homework <laughs> no, no, no. And all these ideas that we're coming up yeah with, you know, <laughs> yeah and then I come back <laughs> with a say yes follow-up she Here's said what? yes <laughs> <laughs> wait do we have do we have a visitor Oh my God, he loves his corn. Did you see the joy? <laughs> I, like, I saw something yellow, but I didn't. Yeah. Know. It's mm-hmm. corn. It's inspired by the corn kid video and I got him I the corn. Uh, I'll drop a link to you. Uh, okay. I think some of your viewers might know. <laughs> There's a song and everything, but he loves it. <laughs> okay. So um, I would like to know how you define in words what music does to you. Why has this been a clear yes in your life throughout all these years? Wow. Uh, is it okay to steal to define this? Because yes, I of course. Mine. Excellent. I, uh, and it's so crazy. I hadn't even thought about this song in a few years and the other day I woke up like humming it like singing it in my head uh so the fact that it's an answer to what you just asked me feels very the matrix is glitching right now but uh there's a song called dancing it's by an artist I I forget I think uh, Elisa maybe and there's a line in the bridge that says Music's the reason why I know time still exists. Uh, And it, I don't know, it's a little cheesy because sure, it's a time-based form. Like there's other time-based arts that can do that for you. But it really spoke to me because like it, there's just, I don't know, there's something about creating with time with with uh, I don't know you you distill it down to its simplest forms and it's nothing it's it's tone it's like like it's nothing like who it's but then you put it all together and it it's something beautiful it can bring you to tears um and it's I don't know it reminds me of where I am and when I am and just who I've been and who I want to be. Um, one quick aside. So I've been doing this for probably like 20 years. Hey, Sherlock. Hey. Hi, <laughs> Sherlock. Second. I'm almost done, bud. <laughs> Finish. <laughs> Give me a moment. Um, I've, I've been doing this for like 20 years. And on my music app, I keep a list of songs that I've heard every year. Um, kind of throughout the year 
Okay. And that gets saved as a playlist. So I've got my 2008, like as a playlist on my, on my phone all the way up, like from the nineties until now. Like your uh, oldies, but goodies. <laughs> oh, kind of. Yeah. For but it's like what, what I heard that year. So a song mm -hmm. on the 2008 playlist could be from 1932, but I heard it that year. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's like specifically for me. So it, it takes me personally back to like where I was when I was, it's one of those senses. It's almost like smell where if you smell something, mm -hmm. it, it just evokes a memory that you didn't even know was there. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, that, that connects to how I feel about it. Like it can transport you. It's interesting. Uh, it's like a, an album with pictures, but it's your, your, um, your songs. Yeah. It's an audio album, mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So it, it, that's what it does for me. And I feel like if I can create that, like if I can bring that moment to someone else somehow, mm -hmm. like I've done my job, like I've, I've existed with purpose and, mm -hmm. um, you know, well done <laughs> and good night, you know, that, <laughs> that's how I feel. Um, but yeah, how I, you, I guess that's what it is. Have you noticed how Sherlock Bones react to your music when you play? It varies. Sometimes he gets all up in my business the way he is right now with <laughs> just talking to you. And then other times he just calms down and is super chill. Mm -hmm. um, once he started howling along with me, <laughs> and that was really interesting. <laughs> I don't remember what song it was. I just remember being confused because that's not something he had done before. <laughs> Did it um, sound like a nice hole? Like, was he enjoying it? Like, or it I can't tell. I don't know. It like, it didn't, I don't think it was unpleasant, but it sounded <laughs> um, like, I don't think the sounds I was making was unpleasant, but maybe they were to dogs. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was almost like he wanted to harmonize. I don't know. <laughs> Can you imagine if Sherlock would become, uh, or could become your critic? So you you that would be fantastic, music and then you play it for him, and <laughs> depending on his several reactions <laughs> or different <laughs> reactions, you you, you get critic. to <laughs> take a, a notebook and you just say, "So this made Sherlock uh, cry. Mm -hmm. This one makes <laughs> made him uh, fall asleep. <laughs> this one makes him happy. He jumps all around. Uh, yeah, he'd be the only critic you can trust <laughs> ever." <laughs> Yeah, just make more of what Sherlock likes. <laughs> <laughs> so now, uh, before I ask you the other question, I just also remember that so Sherlock looks very much like a dog that my oldest nephew, Luis, um, adopted, Jamila. Aww. And um, my brother, so his dad, plays um, guitar, but like the other guitar, the acoustic guitar. Mm -hmm. He plays acoustic guitar. So uh, one day Jamila came. So she would she would always be there when he was playing. But one day they took a picture of Jamila came to and um, sat down or lay down inside the case where the guitar was. So she was there inside the guitar case watching my brother playing the guitar. It was the most beautiful thing. My cats used to do that. It was really? adorable. Uh, well, it bugged me at the time because I didn't want cat hair in my piano case. <laughs> but uh, they did that. And then once I've got this great photo, I'll share it with you of uh, I. All right. Very short story. During mm -hmm. COVID lockdowns, I was like backwards in my sleep schedule. I'd wake up in the middle of the afternoon, go to bed when the sun came up. Uh, and I used to do these uh, live Instagram live sessions of me playing and singing um, mm -hmm. to connect with people because that's <laughs> what we had to do to connect yes. with people at the time. Um, and once I got up from my bench just to get a sip of water or something, I came back and my cat was sitting on the keyboard or the uh, 
seat with the microphone right here with like his mouth open (laughs) and he was like meowing into the microphone and I caught a photo like right at the right time (laughs) where it looks like he's singing it's legendary I love it (laughs) it makes me so happy (laughs) yeah so I they they mimic us I guess I don't know (laughs) I know they're so what was in the cat's name that was Monkey St. Crooks Deville. Oh my goodness. What a we'll call day. him Monkey. <laughs> yeah, I, I I guess I'm outing myself. I like very pompous names for my pets. There's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> who I am, that's what you asked. <laughs> okay. Um, another question. So how do you um introduce music to what you do as a job oh that's fun I've gotten to do that a couple times uh early on in my tenure where I currently work we did a project um where our mutual friend my colleague Marty had the idea to create a music video for a project we were doing um and he had some really great ideas. He's not a musician by trade. So <laughs> some of them needed a little help and a, a little guidance, I think. And that felt so good. That was the moment that I thought, or it was the moment where I felt like I was in the right place doing the right thing in my career, uh, where okay. I got to exactly marry these, you know, two parts of myself uh, in a way that I never had before. And yeah, I I got to contribute to this music video and help write the um, melodies and help with the engineer and producer that was producing the track and all of these different things, like using all of these skills that I'd honed since I was a little girl Mm -hmm. and for my job, it, it felt perfect. Oh, Oh, and those are the why, days. Why did it only happen once? Uh, well, it's, it's not the kind of project we get to do all of the time. Um, and, but is but that I something feel... you you can start pursuing? Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's complicated. Uh, yeah. I We don't have to get too deep into our the workplace or that what what we do now. Um, but we don't get opportunities like that often. So I try to, I try to maximize them whenever there's time. And I think we've got one coming up actually, where I may get to do it again. Um, but I, it's funny that you say that. I, I think it may be something that I search for when I'm figuring out like my next career thing, you know, mm-hmm. th- it did feel good when they were combined together. You know, just I, watching you describe a project mm-hmm. maybe made it very clear that 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 is something that makes you come alive in a different oh, yeah. way. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess I will have to watch it. <laughs> so that I won't be able to watch this back. I I don't know. <laughs> I got to see what it what it's bringing to life. Um but yeah, yeah so- it, it just felt good. <laughs> your homework is gonna have to be watch this video when we publish it and then take notes <laughs> <laughs> right yeah what <laughs> what things made me happy <laughs> because I clearly can't figure it out just on my own <laughs> um yeah honestly you're right I, I will watch it back I I said before that I wouldn't <laughs> be able to I was feeling too anxious about it I don't know I don't like watching myself do you enjoy watching you have to edit um uh, edit them together does that well something interesting has happened because of the beginning um so I knew I wanted to have video and so I had to decide whether to publish the video with the two screens or just the speaker screen Um, So, which meant basically that I was going to be on fewer times than if I'm all the time there. And then I said, no, no, this is a what if I say yes moment. So what am I worried about? That someone is going to criticize my hair, my looks, my whatever. 
Um, that's going to happen regardless. So the only the only thing that I did to make sure I wasn't bothered by others' opinions of what I was doing and publishing was to when I publish publish the video, I just select the no comments. <laughs> so I don't care. Mm. <laughs> Brilliant. Think of me or the interviews. You can <laughs> show me um, with the amount of times you watch the videos. That's the way I know. That's it. That's the only piece of information that I need from you. So, Brilliant. little by little, I started just getting less worried about how I look or how I speak or how it's just, I just enjoy so much talking to interesting people like you that. I, this is what I'm hoping we're transmitting as not my face or my clothes or my not, nothing. It's just the vibes. So this is a good thing. This is a happy thing. This is a nice thing to share. I think it is. I think it's such a good idea. It's really neat that you do this. Um, and you're right. I I can get past that if I'm looking at the real reason for it. None of that none of the rest of it really matters so so by the way um checking in with you how anxious are you right now i'm better oh, good. <laughs> it's fine <laughs> did it's it great. diminish hmm? did the anxiousness and the, the anxiety diminish as we it went diminished along significantly uh it's <laughs> never truly gone it's always there but mm -hmm. um yeah, I, I feel much better having talked to you. Um, and you make it so easy. <laughs> You're a great host. <laughs> you make it easy to talk to you. Um, but I feel you a lot have better. Met, you should have met my brother, Hector. You would have loved him. It's mm. just watching him interacting with other people. And it didn't matter if he knew them or not. He was just this beam of light talking and sharing and being nice and uh, having conversations with whoever at whatever time so I'm just trying to channel a little piece of him with whatever I have inside and <laughs> well without meeting him you must be doing a great job I think so <laughs> you, you must be channeling you. quite a bit <laughs> those are the uh, I really enjoy spending time around people like that because it, um, I don't know. I think I just start reflecting whatever it is around me, whatever energy we get so often, we just reflect it right back. So you're this calm, energetic, kind presence. And so I have no choice, but to give that right back to you, <laughs> um, and it's working uh, and it, that feels so good. So, yeah, thank you. You're very sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There's one thing that we forgot to do, which is um, I usually ask my guests to tell the audience how we met or, or how we haven't met. <laughs> how, do you, yeah. how do we know each other? How are not? we introduced? Yes. Uh -huh. uh, um, so I've mentioned him already. Our mutual, uh, my colleague and our mutual friend, Marty Bacafosco. He is how you and I met. Um, he told me about Hector and uh, their friendship. And uh, he and another colleague and friend, Ariana, uh, we all sort of talked about their experience joining you on the show. Uh, so two of your earlier episodes are the two of them. Um, and I, that's the first time I got anxious about what my yes could potentially be. And this is at a point where it hadn't even occurred to me that you may want to talk to me. Like, why would you want to talk to me? Um, but I, listening to them talk about their yeses, I, I started thinking, God, what would it be? I had no idea. Uh, but he told me more kind of about his and Hector's friendship, um, and then how the two of you connected after Hector's passing and how you were able to be there for each other and this really, in, I guess, enduring, um, deep spiritual way. Uh, and that just spoke to me. It made me more open to meeting you than I even thought that I could have been. Um, and hearing more about your story. Like I wanted to learn more about you. Um, so yeah, the, I guess that's the long version. 
<laughs> about you and I were introduced. And then, yeah, a few WhatsApp messages later, here we are. <laughs> yes. So Marty was my, I have my list here. He was my second interviewee. The first one in English, because the, the, my interview number one, my interview, my first yes. interviewee was That's in all. Spanish. Mm -hmm. And then he was the second interviewee, but he was the first in English. And then Ariana was number 20. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yes, they both agreed that you would be the perfect person to have in my channel. And then... Oh, no. send you my way <laughs> yeah they did um, which I'm very happy about <laughs> I'm very very happy <laughs> I am too uh anxiety aside because really that just clouds the actual feelings I think I I'm also happy to have been here and to have been asked is so nice and <laughs> shucks I, I I don't know like it, it says a lot to me that they would think I I might be someone good to talk about or talk to yeah that's okay. kind of them too mm -hmm. before we end this conversation um do you well, no, how long after you learned the for release two notes could you play the entire song by yourself I think I was in seventh grade, so I was 12, 11 or 12, so I guess six to seven years after that. After um, falling in love with that. <laughs> learning the entire song, not just the little... Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Do you remember how you yeah. felt once you played it completely, like from the beginning to end? I don't know that I appreciated it for what it was mm -hmm. at the time. It, you know, it felt like an accomplishment. Mm -hmm. um, and I certainly recognized, wow, this is the first song that I ever cared about. And I've done this great thing. Like, I know it now. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a funny thing about, like, being a kid. Like, I don't know that we recognize those milestones for what they are um, mm -hmm. until later. So I guess, no, like I, I didn't, I didn't, I, I don't remember how I felt, but I know that I was proud for sure. Like it felt like I had done something. Um, and I, I, if I, I may be writing this into history, like maybe I didn't think this, but I like to think I would have wanted my uncle to be proud of me too. Uh, the way that I felt like the way I was proud of me. Um, for that like look at me now like I wish you could see me kind of thing but that made me yeah. think of another question knowing what we now know about your uncle and how you how important he was in your life and for you mm -hmm. have you ever composed a song about him or for him <laughs> I haven't no that's uh, I've never been able to write songs about my family. I, I find a lot of inspiration and heartbreak <laughs> and relationships. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, Taylor Swift and I have that in common, I guess. <laughs> um, I haven't managed to do that yet. I have a lot of songs that I associate with different family members, mm -hmm. um, that I'll play or maybe sing. Like my grandmother is Claire de Lune, Debussy. Um, mm -hmm. My mom is uh, that Carol King song, <laughs> Where You Lead, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so everybody's got their song, but I, I've i struggled to write more. I, it's something I want to explore, though. Mm -hmm. yeah, what is your song? What is the song that defines you? Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> that's That's a big one. I've never assigned one to myself. Going full circle to the who are you? <laughs> yeah. Tell us who Come are on. you in the song. I struggled the first time. You're gonna bring us back. Um maybe geez. with music, it's easier. Yeah. Uh I do have a song that I think sort of defines me. So 
that's crazy. Ariana, you're number 20. She asked me this not two weeks ago. Like, what's the song that like is you? <laughs> it felt so random at the time, but now again, <laughs> the matrix is glitching. Um <laughs> There's this one song called Life in Color by One Republic and the tune, the beat, the it's a regular little pop song, like whatever. It's not super special, I think, on its surface, but the lyrics are all about finding um, the color in the dark times and finding happiness and vibrance in in days that are gray and dull and difficult and I feel like on my best days that is my song and on my worst days that is the song that I need um so remind yourself who you are mm -hmm. yeah that I still have it (laughs) yeah I love it oh man (laughs) look what you've done (laughs) Um, before we close this interview, we end this interview and to be fair to you, let's just share with the audience what I shared with you at the beginning to make you feel less anxious. So before I started recording, I asked Tonika, she was anxious and then I said, well, what if, um, I just tell you something funny about myself and then (laughs) so I'm going to tell that anecdote. Are it's you ready? Great. Oh, <laughs> oh, everybody get ready. It's wonderful. <laughs> Hang on. We got, we got a good story to, <laughs> to listen to. Okay. Oh yeah. So then when I was um, possibly in elementary school and I would walk outside our home, maybe going to the corner store or somewhere without adults around. Um, and because we didn't have candy at home and we didn't have, we didn't eat fast food or we didn't have like all these, um, all these kind of things and foods that are very, um, that a kid always likes or, or wants. There was this kind of gum that I was obsessed with. And for the life of me, still, no. I can't remember. <laughs> oh, we were so sure it was going to come to you mid-interview. Yeah. <laughs> maybe at the end of the interview, or maybe I'll publish this and, and the image of the yeah. name. So oh, there was God. these long gums, different flavors. Um, I remember two specifically, banana and grape. So it was yellow and purple. And they're all in the same pack? No, they, they, okay. they came individually. Okay. And so, um, because I didn't buy them, they didn't buy them for me. I would only get them in parties inside of a piñata or as a birthday gift. Or if I was walking outside without adults supervising me and I found a chewed gum <laughs> of that brand, on the floor or on the sidewalk. So that meant someone had had it in their mouth before me, had spit it out, had landed on the floor. Then I don't know if it was days, minutes, um, weeks later, I would be walking outside. I would find that piece of (laughs) delicious candy. I would pick it up and because I was very conscious about being clean and and safety and everything, I would always, (laughs) I would take it back home and I would wash it, which meant only rinsing it because I didn't even use soap. You don't want to lose the flavor. It It would have changed the flavor. Yeah. (laughs) So. Oh my God, I would rinse it and then I would put it in my mouth. Delicious, A plus. I was telling Tonika that I could still um, remember the banana flavor of one of them. (laughs) Excellent. Like the fact that it still had flavor, that is what blows my mind. That's 
amazing, but also it's awful because that means whoever came before you kept spitting out perfectly good pieces of gum still. Like you don't spit out your gum until the flavor is gone. Everyone knows this until it's like, you know, basically disintegrating in your mouth. That's when the gum goes away, but they are prematurely discarding their gum and their trash was your treasure. And I appreciate this anecdote so much. You have no idea. (laughs) It's wonderful. Weirdly enough, I'm just making the connection with Hector's story or Hector's story about the raggedy doll that Valentina picked up that for her, it was a treasure. Mm. So yeah. Oh, that yeah. was a treasure for me if I had had Hector watching me and me trying to pick it up, he would have thought, no. Absolutely that's not, not, sis. <laughs> and then he no would have way. said, well, what if I say yes to you? Yeah, go ahead, put it in your mouth. <laughs> right. Yeah. He's there egging you on. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Okay. But also, so there was one more piece of the story that I think is fantastic. Did you ever get sick? I know. That was the weird thing. Because for example, I remember, so outside our school, there was always the card that sold um, like ices or the other one that sold um, like chips and chicharrones and the other one that sold um, fruits and veggies like mangoes and cucumbers with lemon and um, chilito piquin. So I grew up with this mandate from my maternal grandmother that we were not to buy or try any of that food because we would get sick for sure. Because the people who prepare or handle this food um, don't have bathroom close enough or don't yeah didn't no have hygiene. the means yeah <laughs> and so that I never did or if I did it was like once in a blue moon and it, then I would be so scared about if I was going to get sick or not but that was like that's a no a clear no but nobody told me about <laughs> 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 No, they didn't tell you, but they didn't have to because clearly you were in good hands. Because what did you do after you picked it up? You rinsed it off. That they'd already taught you everything you needed to know to be safe (laughs) and hygienic with uh, your gum. Okay, wait. Last question. Sorry, now I'm asking you all these questions. (laughs) Yes. Have you ever seen like where I think it's just in certain cities or maybe at theme parks sometimes like people will take their gum out and they'll put it on a tree or on a wall and it ends up being just this big wall or tree covered in used chewing gum. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You've never seen one of those. No, man. There's a big there's a whole alleyway in uh, Seattle where uh they've done this it is intense you're just wall to ceiling or floor to ceiling and all around just gum every as far as the eye can see Uh, I don't have a follow-up to this (laughs) well that was it if you've seen that and if you Uh, know I thought your question was going to be if I saw one of those if I would dare to take one of those gums well not anymore, <laughs> because I assumed there was an expiration date on when you stopped doing this. But I guess that is my question. Like, if you remember the last piece of gum you picked up and like, <laughs> uh, and like, what was sort of the end? Like, what was the last time you did it? And when you said like, hmm, maybe I'm done doing this now. No, it's it's more or less what you describe about um, the piece for at least. Um, it's just something that happened and then it stopped happening. Like, I don't remember when I began. I don't remember when it ended. I just remember having done it and maybe reflecting years later and saying, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> no, you do that. 
<laughs> I think it's brilliant. But that's what being a kid is, right? Like we just do all this random weird stuff and a lot of it, no one's there to see. <laughs> And hopefully we remember it later to be like, wait a second, but probably I've got to assume that so many things we do as children, we do not remember. <laughs> so many weird little things are just unconscious and gone forever. <laughs> and we won't remember see that black hole That's that it. I, I mentioned about. So I played instruments and then I went to so funny thing is that those memories about picking up gum <laughs> hadn't gone. So those are the ones who should have gone inside the black hole. And then <laughs> I could have <laughs> I could have kept my knowledge for playing instruments, learn about playing instruments, but no. I yeah. forgot everything and then I didn't forget about the cup. <laughs> yeah, you deleted the wrong stuff. It happens to the best of us. <laughs> so anyway, that's what we did at the beginning before started started um we started recording to ease your anxiety. Then <laughs> it was great. And I'm really happy that you shared it. I didn't expect you to share it as part of the episode. It's wonderful. <laughs> And it did. It helped me ease. Like it helped a lot of the anxiety at the beginning. I was, you saw me, I was on the verge of tears. Like, oh no, I don't know what I'm going to say. Uh, and it, it all turned out fine, which is, I guess, how anxiety works. So now I have to say out loud, if you listen to this, don't try it at home. <laughs> It is my responsibility <laughs> to say out loud, please don't try it at home. Don't try this at home, folks. You leave chewed gum on the ground where it belongs, or I guess yes. better in the trash can. <laughs> yeah, that was the previous chewer's fault. They should have discarded it appropriately, <laughs> not left it for uh, young children to find. And I guess I'm in thinking also um retrospectively maybe i was showing signs of this new world where we have to learn how to reuse recycle and <laughs> i had to do something with that gum i mean it was part of <laughs> helping the environment <laughs> uh, because one thing is clear when I was done with the gum, I didn't spit it out. I put it in the trash. So there was a, a community service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you know what? I wasn't with you at the beginning, but now you got me. You were just doing your civic duty. <laughs> I'm on board. I, I popped on that bandwagon. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, amazing. this is a perfect note to end this conversation. <laughs> I agree. End with joy. End with silly anecdotes always. They make everyone happy. I think they make the world a better place. Yes. Um, please send me pictures, images you want to share with the it. audience to put at the end of this interview. And I you don't know how much I appreciate you coming to my channel and having this conversation and working through your anxiety um, and your nervousness throughout the conversation. It really means a lot to me. Uh, thank you for having me. I I've felt really uh, grateful to be asked and it's been delightful. I don't know what I was afraid of. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I'm glad. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. And hopefully I'll get to meet you and it would be wonderful if I could go to Atlanta and meet with you, Ariana. Yeah. Party one day. And All of us. That would be so great. Uh, so we'll what have if to I you, visit. What if I say yes, uh, Atlanta chapter? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The what if I say yes tour. But <laughs> podcasts are doing that all the time now. There you go. Yeah. Go on tour. I like That's it. That's my homework now. All right. Well, now I have to do my homework. <laughs> You're going to yeah. do yours. That was a kind <laughs> reminder for, for you too. Okay. So thank you so much. 
Uh, is, is Sherlock over there? And he he says, is. He's down here. Bye, Sherlock Bones. You're being, you're being summoned, buds. Thank you for up, joining us. Goodbye. You what? He says goodbye. He's not coming up. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye.